Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful, empowered harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in on a great viewer question that is to discuss the problem with sort of um, recurring or what is known in psychology as intrusive thoughts or ruminate, ruminating. <clears throat> and how do you sort of release this cycle, release this mechanism <clears throat> when it comes to moving through a relationship that has really got you under the weather or overthinking and overanalyzing what happened. And, you know, how do you break free and liberate yourself from this pattern of thinking? That's a great viewer question because when we talk about coming to terms with relationships that have been disempowering, Usually there is a degree of dependency, oftentimes unconscious dependency on the other individual. So if this person is a narcissist, a covert narcissist, a psychopath, there is a degree of disempowering that um, communication style that this type of relationship will take. Uh, because of the deception, because of pathological lying, that these personality types engage in, it put others at a disadvantage. Sometimes we are aware or slightly aware of the disadvantage. In other words, in the course of the relationship, they might do something that throws up a red flag. <clears throat> Why did they come home this late? Why did they not call me? Why did they do this in the car? Why are they always on their phone at dinner? What are they doing there behind the scene? You know, behind the curtain. You might have seen some untoward behavior, flirting behavior, even though you're engaged, married, or talking about it. You know, this sort of, you know, makes the other person sort of trying, to, you know, and it put them in a, an awkward position that they have to monitor, control, inquire, just sort of clear the air. In other words, you have a sneaky feeling that something is not right, but oftentimes it can be at an awkward situation, in opportune time for you to bring it up, or you bring it up and they're too tired, this isn't a good time. You know, this can be a problem. Or something that you don't know how to address, that you have to remain silent on. You know, I don't know why they did this. Um, this is very you know, um, maybe, you know, uh, you know, something that puts you in an untoward situation that you don't know how to address. Maybe they're bisexual. Maybe you find them looking at, you know, um, porn pornographic material or um, doing excessive drinking or drugging or, you know, just, just behaviors that make you go, um, that's not really going to help our relationship. That's going to tear us apart. And so how do you get out of, you know, so the ruminating thoughts, the intrusive thoughts are very typical, especially when you're in a relationship with someone who is psychopathic, especially a pathological liar who operates by deception. They put one face forward here and then over here, there's something apparently very contradictory and there's a conflict of interest. You know, if they're cheating on you, I'm doing things with finances, talking about you behind your back, you know, creating a smear campaign about you. And so there's just a, an eroding of trust. Oftentimes when this is hitting the fan, people who are in a supply become unconsciously dependent on these people, dependent on sort of their answers, their explanations, you know, their settling of the relationship. They want more information. So you become dependent, you know, on this individual, you know, you have, there's natural interdependency, but there's also a dependence needing them to explain things, needing, needing them to, uh, you know, uh, you know, come to terms, come to Jesus, you know, have the toe to toe discussion and help remove the tension. But if you were in a situation, especially where you don't have a lot of knowledge, and know how to deal with it or have ignored a lot of red flags, you're unconsciously becoming dependent 
And so you don't have that internal sense of control. You can't create closure for yourself. You can't stop thinking about it because the other part, your the other half, is not available to help you to process. So people's imaginations will run wild. Uh, they'll become very threatened, very fearful, trying to get everything to come to light. And so it can set into motion this sort of ruminating thoughts, you know, and then sort of always backtracking, always backtracking, always looking back. So it'll rob you of your future or your feeling of being liberated, your feeling of being empowered, your feeling of being clear, your feeling of being okay and confident with your decision making and being decisive. It creates a lot of, you know, waffling or flounder like behaviors if you don't have honest and clear communication with the other individual. So it can create and perpetuate this feeling, you know, of it's trying to work through the feeling of, of the gaslighting and the brainwashing. It's the body automatic process. So it's an, you know, and, and so if you feel that, you know, maybe there's a problem with me, you know, um, I'm overthinking this, I'm overanalyzing that can be, you know, you know, the case, you know, so because it puts it into motion and you're trying to just make sense of everything. This is an automatic process, just like breathing, just like your heartbeat, you know, just like, you know, walking, you don't, you know, it's, it's what your body does to get places and make progress on your journey. So don't fault yourself and beat yourself up. If you have engaged in a lot of overthinking, you do need to become educated. You do need to become informed. You do need to develop coping skills. These are skills that we're talking about. So if you are, you know, you might be able to deal with other things very easily, but this is requiring a lot of excessive thought. And overthinking will lead to sort of a, a paralysis where you're doing too much thinking up here and you're not, you know, in your body enough. You're not in your heart. So to stop those sort of that pattern, you need to break the pattern. You have to become aware of it, first of all. And you have to understand the, you know, that it's going to erode sort of a certain value at a certain point. Meaning, you know, it's it's just going to set you back. It's not going to help move you forward and in the clear and in the happy zone, in the positive zone, in the I am you know, enjoying a, a better life now zone. So it's like you're always sort of hanging on to it. And that's an automatic process once again, so you can make sense of things, you know, so, but if it's gotten you to the point where you are stuck and you're not taking action, you're not doing things, you're just still trying to, you know, um, analyze and, and, you know, and then you, you don't feel ready. Um, and so you have to look at, at the degree you know, look at the degree of time, look at the degree of perhaps where, you know, you have reoccurring thoughts that focus around a specific topic. If there's a specific topic, like maybe they lied to you, maybe they put you down a lot, um, maybe they cheated on you, maybe they did things with the mortgage money and you no longer have a house. I mean, there's all sorts of situations and degrees to which this can be affected. So you have to really look at and understand those isolated areas that you have the ruminating thoughts about and begin to uh, realize that you, the health is in your hands for you to sort of untangle that knot. And you are responsible for the closure within yourself. That'll give you a, a great degree of empowerment. If you can process and say, you know what, I understand that, you know, this person, that they put me down in order to shift the blame, release them from that burden and put it all on me, whether because I'm a female, a male, I'm, you know, born in the middle, I'm born first, I'm born last, I was the ugliest, I was the prettiest, whatever reason, <clears throat> this person chose you and then you chose them. So it's to realize that there was a degree of you know, uh, violent, you know, uh, volition, you know, so if you can understand and sort of get back to your experience of free will, which is something that all human beings are born with, 
the ability to choose. So yes, I do believe that a lot of things are fated and there's destiny, but God also, the, um, the supreme being, the divine order, which is responsible for all of creation, you know, factored this into your very sophisticated and complex body. And so, you know, you, this is yours. And part of that is your thinking. So this is yours. It does not belong to the narcissist. It does not belong to the psychopath. So you really have to get that at a very, very many, many levels. You have to really digest that and realize, you know, that, you know, your spirit is, you know, all, you know, within this body, you know, this is yours. This is not theirs. And so you need to understand that and really process that, especially if you've been fooled or deceived otherwise. And that's part of the reoccurring intrusive thoughts where, because the, the, you know, there comes a time when the psychopath or the narcissist can quote unquote own you, i.e. push you around like, you know, you're one of their possessions, tell you how you're going to feel, tell you what you should not do. Oftentimes it's not what you should do in the proactive, you know, don't be this, don't do that. And it's how you are is up to you. No one, you know, really has that ability to control you. If they're over, um, so meaning that if they're oftentimes, you know, very controlling with their intensity, with their, you know, with their negative wrath, you know, hostility, um, a feeling of, you know, that, you know, what is wrong with you? Why can't you let me go out for a whole weekend and not report back to you? Like all these different things that you might have encountered, you know, you gave them too much, you know, you had, you felt that you had to keep them on a leash or they, or it felt like they were keeping you on a leash. You know, that sort of controlling situation is, you know, is, is very discouraging. And a lot of people will then, you know, over obligate and really try to, get this closure by overthinking over, you know, over processing, you know, and it keeps you in a, in a stalemate process. So to free yourself of that pattern is to become aware of it and try to understand uniquely for yourself, where are these intrusive thoughts, you know, sort of centered on, is it, I can't believe he cheated on me. I can't believe she did this, you know, um, or, you know, you're still upset about the degree to which you bought their lies, you know, that you were, you know, all these different. So oftentimes it's also times, you know, you're owning these negative states that they planted the seeds that you need to eradicate from your garden, like pulling weeds out. You need to, you know, and look at the feelings that they create and then alchemize and change that feeling. So if it's the feeling of being in the dark, of not being included, of being, you know, uh, put down, of being, you know, concealed, you know, realize that that is the tactic of these people to control and disempower, meaning removing your power from you, your truth, your voice, your ability to absorb and process can also be, you know, usurped from you because it, it comes like a full-time job for a lot of people trying to figure out what happened. And also, I think the main thing is not only reflecting and looking back, but to understand that someone who is narcissistic or psychopathic and targeting others or for supply to a certain degree, you know, they, you, you know, you are interdependent, but there's this feeling sort of, of, of difficulty sort of, of, of liberating and feeling whole and complete. And oftentimes it's because of the wounds that need tending to and nurturing. Um, but, and, and look at the degree to which we, you know, we talk about the things here, process and understand, you know, what manipulation is, what it feels like for you, how to see it clearly and identify it and how not to get caught up, not to get fall into the trap, you know, to see it coming and then go another direction, you know, cancel, cancel. So in other words, red flags, things that you might've fallen for before, you will find that you are no longer falling for whatsoever. You know, when somebody tries to overpower you, you know, don't, no, I'm not falling for that. I'm not taking this projection anymore. I'm not taking this loss of communication anymore. That's all you have to say. So 
a viewer was asking, you know, how do you confront somebody on their projection? You know, you, you don't, you know, hey, you've been project, you know, you don't go and have this all elaborate um, discussion with them that gives them a chance to explain and justify, you know, uh, that or to show that you now are aware and then you want to sort of throw this and pop this on them and say, hey, I've got this new knowledge. This is what you did, da, 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 da. Don't engage in that. Don't step into the boxing ring. You know, this is for knowledge in your heart so you can liberate and stop over-processing and move on and get into the heart space and to start shaking, to, you know, focusing on your behaviors, taking your recovery date, getting your recovery gift. Start surrounding yourself with better quality people who are supportive, open and honest, and don't need to threaten others to get power and authority. You know, um, and so the ruminating thoughts are, are just going to wear you out and exhaust you. Adrenal fatigue cause just a constant fight or flight or stress, and then you're living by the hormones of stress, which will break you down chemically in the body. Excessive stress is not healthy. It is not healthy. And loneliness is not healthy either. So if you're just sort of always alone, processing, not taking action, not doing the exercises or using the tools that we talk about here, you're, you know, you need to apply the tools and that should become a behavior so that you can liberate and then break the cycle break the cycle um, and understand the areas of the reoccurring thoughts. And so if you need to sort of go no contact, you need to go no contact. And, you know, you need to give a simple statement. If you need to confront them or explain why you're moving, you're not doing something with them while, you know, you're changing your job, changing where you're living, you just need to say, I'm not taking this anymore. Um, I'm not being an object of your projection. I'm not being an object of your insecurity. That's it. Period. End of story. It should not be open for discussion. When you are decisive, you are decisive. You need to be able to back yourself up. You need to own your decisions. In order to own it, you need to sort of check it out like a place that you're going to live. Yes, I can live here. You need to own it. You need to say, yes, this is mine. My life is mine. And it's not, you know, to have the quality of the feeling of negativity that has been blanketed on you. So if you have that negative, just sort of saddle, you need to shake it off. You need to take off that saddling that they have done, either an emotional saddle, a physical saddle, you know, get it off your back, move through the behaviors that are required to liberate you. If you have not taken your recovery date, if you have not been doing your astromations, if you have not been seeing a change of your feelings, your income, your relationships, you are not then probably applying the tools. You know, if and, and so you need to get into the application process, getting into the doing. And the overthinking is to catch yourself. Yep, I'm overthinking this. I need to just start doing. Stop stopping yourself from the behaviors and getting into the heart. And so, you know, if you are still in the ruminating thoughts, then you need to have heart for yourself and compassion. Have empathy. Begin to embrace yourself and have compassion and empathy, just like you would for a good friend. OMG, I can't believe they did this. That's really rotten. That really stinks. You deserve better. So you need to be able to give yourself that pep up talk and exit. And then the more time and distance you get, you'll see that you deserve better. You'll see that you were not an energetic match for this person. If you have the ruminating thoughts, part of you might still be believing and you know that you still deserve this person, that you can't have another, um, that you'll never be ready that you'll never be able to work, you'll never be able to make money, you'll never be able to move, you'll never be able to be creative, you'll, you'll never read, you know, read, you know, all these never things, you know. So if you're, you know, try, you know, in that down and pity party, you know, to a certain degree, you got to put away the put, pity party balloons. 
You got to put away the pity party streamers. You got to stop throwing the poor, poor, pitiful me, woe is me. You, you know, that's just going to depress you. It's going to rob you of your energy. Most importantly, it's going to rob you of your time. Your time is the most valuable commodity that you have. You know, if you're wasting years, months, decades, you know, look at that and say, you know what, enough is enough. You know, we're all not getting any younger. Do you, you know, and so you need to take matters into your hands. For a lot of people, they have not had to do this or have never done this before. This is a emotional education, you know, emotional intelligence. Daniel Goldman, who wrote that book several years ago, talks about emotional intelligence. You need to get you know, wise emotionally and embrace that aspect and understand the components of manipulation, control, disempowerment, pathological lying, facades, all these terms of psychology that you might have encountered in this relationship and understand. And then, you know, um, give a, a degree of, of, of self-trust that once you really get to know this, that you will not fall for this again. And so, and knowing that you have to have that confidence within yourself. I know this enough to identify it. I know that I am strong enough to identify red flags. You know, how many of you earlier in your life were not sure of how to deal with this type of person? So you did not deal because you could not, you, you did not know what to do. A lot of people, once again, they find themselves in awkward situations like a deer in headlights, even though. The deer go, should say, man, that's a car. That thing's about to run me over. They're just, you know, it's an, an automatic process that they go through. It's not that the deer can go back to the herd and go, man, you know, a lot of our chummies are getting, you know, knocked off over there. You know, it's an, it's an instinctual process. So the ruminating thoughts is that it's an instinctual process. You can't blame yourself for having these feelings, these thoughts. You know, it's natural, it's normal, it's your body, you know, trying to say you need to protect yourself, you need to save yourself here. You know, can you get my drift? Can you hear these reoccurring thoughts? It's trying to bring it to your conscious attention, you know, like your own body trying to give you a warning. So that's a little bit about the background, I feel, of the why, you know, and then under, to release that cycle, you have to do something to break the cycle. You have to understand, you know, what are the areas that you're ruminating about, um, you know, and then you need to be able to see it clear enough so that you can back up and have, you know, a strong set of self-belief for why you're making the changes and why you have, why your heart is where it is. You know, you have to know your own heart and own it. And if you're not used to that, you've never done that before, then there's always a first. So let's get this right. Own your truth, own your statements, own your I am. You know, you, it's okay to not have known before, but you know, I didn't know then, but I do know now. You know, that can be your astromation. And keep in the flow. Keep your behaviors going of self-compassion. Learn to observe rather than being reactive. And look at the percentage of your day where the ruminating thoughts are going on. If it's a big if it's really problematic, then catch yourself. Look at the time, you know, of, you know, so if, if you catch yourself ruminating, feeling down, you know, feeling, you know, that you, you're not happy, you know, put, you know, get a, a you know, an, a good old fashioned timer, like the kitchen timers, you know, when you're going to cook something back in the day, you know, for 20 minutes, 10 minutes, you know, your smartwatch, your phone, put on an alarm. And say, you know what, I'm going to sit here and sulk for, you know, 10 minutes. And then after that, I'm going to go on my recovery date. I'm going to, you know, sulk here for 10 minutes. And then I'm going to go read a good book. I'm going to sulk here for 10 minutes. And then I'm going to go and do, find, you know, uh, and clear out and do what I've been procrastinating on. I'm going to understand that this is a lesson learned and I'm going to, you know, really work on my affirmations. 
and be, you know, change. You, you, you need to get it back into your body and have that value and self-belief. I believe in my future. I own my future. I own my feelings. These are in the realm of my control and I accept 100% responsibility. And it's okay to not get along with this person. It's okay to say no. It's okay to have a boundary. It's okay to have a standard. You know, so you need to become more aware and articulate of what your boundaries and what your standards are and uphold them and enforce them. And, you know, definitely, um, you know, look at that and make sure that you're getting enough rest, you're eating well, you're not stressing yourself out, you're giving yourself time to complete things, and, you know, you're conserving energy, you know, you're not trying to, um, you know, uh, you know, spend so much of your time in the dumps and really limit that. Um, and you'll be able to break the cycle. Begin to create and surround yourself with new people. Even if it's difficult, you know, just be cool, calm, and collected. You know, seek out new people, new, um, you know, support groups, new, new interests. You know, we, we talk about, you know, all these, you know, if I, if I weren't ruminating so much, I would really love to. If I didn't have the same thought going over and over and over again, I really want to. And so, and, and answer this for yourself and list one through 10 and then act on your inspiration. You need to be able to get into motion, you know, and then allow it to flow. Live on that inspiration today. This is your buddy, Peace and Harmony with you here today. And I hope that these videos do help. Please share, please subscribe, and please donate for more great tools, videos, discussions, and support. Peace out. Have a beautiful day. Peace in.